We are certainly happy to welcome you to Fair Park Community Baptist Church today. We are glad you are with us and praying for a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we'll be partaking of communion at the end of this hour and looking forward to that special uh, time as we bond together with our Savior, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, more announcements to follow, but we are so glad you are here with us and looking forward to a blessed day in the Lord. As we hear our chime start, right on the money. I like that. So anyway, welcome who, those of you who are listening on Facebook. We're glad to have you with us today. And uh, today, we're just going to worship the Lord and have a good time in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to uh, start with, uh, our, uh, with Brother Al playing. And after he has played uh, the introduction to our services, then we'll have Ruth come and lead us in a song. everyone sorry it takes me so long to get up in here but I'm moving I want to say hello and welcome everybody to church this morning I know it's kind of dreary out but let's put the sunshine in here and let the Lord see us shine so let's stand and sing our song what a friend we have in Jesus Al. Still are red. 
you happy to be here this morning? Say amen. 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 Well, you know, we're in Ohio, and so we can expect a nice, chilly, cold, snowy April. <laughs> Let's pray the end of the month is better than the beginning of the month. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we do come before you. We worship you, for you are hallowed. You are precious. You are awesome. There is none beside you. There never will be, and there never has been. And Lord, we are here today to praise your name and give you thanks for all that you have blessed us with. Amen. Amen. Now, as Doug would say, greet a friend. Yes, amen. Greet a friend. If you would like to join with me, I will be reading the Lord's words out of Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 29. Very interesting passage. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because he had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. So ends the reading of God's blessed word today. Amen. Thank you, Brother David, for reading the word of God for us. and. Uh, just uh, good to see each and every one of you today and to see each and every one of you with a smile on your face. Okay, now I see it. All right, okay. <laughs> We're glad you're here. So glad. Good to see Bill, Scott, and Mary back in the Lord's house. Uh, Bill's been, uh, been sick for a while now, and he is up and about and and Mary's dragging behind him now, right? Yeah, that's what I, it, yeah. So anyway, so glad that uh, Brother Bill's doing so much better. And uh, we're, we're thankful for that. So continue to remember him in your prayers and just pray that God uh, would uh, bless him, we pray, in a, in a very, very special way. Uh, we want to uh, uh, remind you of uh, all our prayer needs today and just encourage you to be in prayer for uh, all of these that we have up. Remember John Cockrell in your prayers. It's uh, Cookie's son. Uh, I know she's trying to uh, take care of him at home and, and uh, certainly in need of prayer. So please uh, please remember uh, remember him. And uh, my son Brian, he is uh, healing and doing better. Uh, the surgery has, has so far been a great success and uh, uh, he's not running uh, or jumping yet, but anyway, but he is uh, moving and, and has feeling back in his leg that he had lost feeling in, so we are, are so, so uh, thankful for that. Uh, Bob Johnston, continue to pray for Bob. Uh, he is uh, in uh, 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 ProMedica Nursing Home and just pray that God would bless him. And also, uh, uh, 
Uh, remember Kathy Edwards, uh, she is in the nursing home in um, uh, community and pray that uh, God would bless her. Um, uh, continue to pray for Ron Sanderson. I know uh, uh, Laura Postel is going down to see her sister and, and who uh, has a number of health issues down in Florida or is down there. So pray for that safe trip. And then Sue Berry uh, left last week ill and uh, so pray for her that she would just continue to improve. Uh, my sister still in need of prayer, uh, waiting still for another surgery date. And then Doug and uh, uh, both Doug and Cheryl uh, anyway need prayers for healing, and uh, and we encourage you to do that. Um, and then uh, remember, if you would, Randy Sanderson very much in your prayers. Uh, Randy is critically ill. That's Ron Sanderson's son, and uh, we just uh, need to pray for him, and and certainly uh, at this time of life. Pray also for Brother Ron. Uh, he will be going uh, this uh, leaving Wednesday, going Thursday to uh, to have a second service uh, with uh, Patty's family up in uh, uh, well, just outside of Akron in Campbell, Ohio. And just pray for safety of travel for him there. And he'll be there a couple days. And and she uh, her ashes will be interred with her mother's. Uh, at her mother's grave. So you, you pray if you would uh, please for that. Uh, Hazel Blankenship, remember her in a very special way. Hazel is uh, uh, talked to me last night and just having with her foot that she's had issues with, uh, uh, anyway, just some serious problems there. So pray for her. And also Phyllis Spires. Uh, Phyllis uh, is, uh, suddenly had problems walking, so she's using a walker. Uh, right now at this time, but be in prayer that God would just uh, bless Phyllis in a in a very very special uh, way. Also, Mary uh, Mary Alice uh, Millizer is uh, is pretty sick right now, so we ask our prayers for her, and uh, pray also for the the names that are here. Uh, it's good to see Don and and uh, Dottie Gr Griffin in church today, and uh, Don continues to battle uh, with uh, surgeries that he's had. Uh, for a couple of years now, so you pray for him. Uh, and uh, anyway, it's just good to see him in church today. We're glad that they are here. And uh, also, um, uh, let me see. I think uh, the majority of the rest of the names uh, need need our prayers, but uh, those are kind of the ones that we wanted to highlight today. Are there any other uh, prayer needs that we need to mention today? Yes, brother Jeff. Okay. L Linda Aiken? Eddington, sorry. Okay, Linda Eddington. So pray for Linda Eddington, please. Okay. Is that it? Okay, all right. All right, so we will remember also Linda Eddington today. And uh, anyway, pray that God would, uh, would bless, uh, bless her in a special way. And just thank you for all the prayers and uh, for, for all of the people on our behalf. Uh, our uh, our banquet for the uh, uh, for our um, all our new members was very successful. I had a great we had 21 there and anyway had a good time and uh, uh, a good meal and I just appreciate all that went. Uh, so uh, this card was given to me by uh, Brother David Lippert and. Uh, Anyway, it says, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer, Matthew 21, 22. It says, thank you all for being there for us as we grieved the passing of our dear Evan. Your prayers, visits, gifts, food, and love will always be remembered. May you be blessed, the family of Evan Williams. So uh, we uh, ask you to remember, continue to remember them in your prayers and uh, just thankful that, uh, that God watches over us and in hard times of life that he uh, is there to give us peace that we need. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, sing our praise chorus. Uh, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And uh, that's all right. I was just going to say, I always thought Shirley was a lady I knew, but it isn't. Okay, all right, just wanted to add that. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let's sing it through two times and as we sing that uh, 
uh, chorus twice on the second time will ask you if you have an unspoken request. Those of you who are home as well, please raise your hand and we'll remember those, uh, those requests as well as these we've mentioned. As we go to sing, surely the presence. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. As we sing that again. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Lord, as we come before you today, it is with joy, with thanksgiving, with a heart of gladness, Lord, that we love you and approach this wondrous time of the year as we think about the flowers that are blooming, the birds that are singing, and we think of life that you give, that you have given us so abundantly through Jesus Christ. And we pray today, Lord, as we are here, and we mention many needs and many hands extended upward, and I'm sure in homes as well, that, Lord, you bless these that just need our love and our tender care as well as your special hand of healing. So, Lord, today we pray that your will will be done in our midst that your will will be done among our people, and that, Lord, throughout the land as we pray for not only people but nations as well, that, Lord, your will be done, we pray. Lord, we need you today. This hour of communion that draws upon us is a special time as we remember especially what Jesus has done for us at the cross of Calvary those many years ago. And, Lord, today we rejoice in the fact that there is an Easter Sunday to celebrate. And so, Lord, today as we are here in this room, in this place, as a people, as one single people before you, might you move in our hearts, might you move in our spirits, and might the Word of God be proclaimed today in a way that enables folks to know Jesus Christ as Savior and as Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, for caring for us, for giving to us. And Lord, today we need thee every hour. And we pray this moment that you guide us and that you instruct us and that what is said and done in this hour will be done for your honor and for your glory. For we pray and we ask this in the blessed name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We want to just make a few quick announcements. We'll not spend a long time, but we do want to remind you next Sunday, hard to believe, but we are here. Palm Sunday will be with us. Uh, we have uh, palms that we will be giving to uh, all of you that are present next Sunday. A palm, single palm, maybe I better explain that, not a whole palm plant, okay? Uh, but a, a single palm. And we'll rejoice together singing Hosanna to the Lord. And I'm looking forward to a special service here. I want you to come back and, uh, and get your palm in the palm of your hand. Does that make sense? Okay. Anyway, next Sunday, 1030, uh, and we're looking for a great hour. And uh, certainly uh, invite those listening uh, by way of our broadcast. And if you're in the area to come and be with us, we would love that. Uh, on the 11th, uh, our church council will be uh, meeting at, uh, at 6 p.m. And then on the 15th, we will be having a Good Friday service. That'll be at 1130. 
and we plan on uh, having some uh, sandwiches and uh, snacks to, uh, to enjoy after that service as we remember that Jesus died for our sins. So if you can come be with us on that Friday, we'll be meeting at 11.30 a.m. And uh, then at, uh, it'll just be a half hour service and we invite you for a very special time here. And then Easter Sunday, the 17th uh, at 10.30 a.m. Uh, will be our, uh, our special service as we celebrate Easter and we're looking forward to having a, uh, a good crowd here as we uh, remember he rose and so uh, Lord willing I haven't heard anything yet but I hope to have a special gift get or gift for everyone that is here so that's on the uh, 17th so anyway a, a busy month uh, and uh, the, uh, the 30th will be our men's fellowship breakfast and then don't forget our ongoing activities through the week Sunday school was uh, held this morning at 9 30 a.m. Doug Chevalier is teaching uh, the class again and Thankful that he is back, and uh, uh, I know Dave Lippert filled in some for him while he was uh, uh, unable to teach, and so uh, thank, thanks to Dave for that. And then Bible study uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m., we will be meeting here, and we're going through just a simple way to invite people to church. So we hope you'll come and be with us this Wednesday at 10 a.m. And then the other thing we wanted to remind you of, we do have a food pantry ministry that we have begun. And certainly if you know of someone who is in need of, uh, uh, of a help uh, for a week's supply of food, or at least uh, uh, certainly part of that, uh, we, we have the means now to take care of that. And you can contact the church, uh, contact Angie uh, McGraw, or uh, contact me, and we'll uh, make sure that that information is forwarded and, and that uh, we want to be a blessing and help. So we've, we've helped a family, I think, so far, and so we're glad we've had that opportunity. And moving forward, I'm sure we'll be helping more. So uh, anyway, thank you for your help in that, and that'll be an ongoing ministry, uh, Lord willing. So... I think that takes us through all, let me see, one other announcement. Brenda? All right, Brenda wants to meet with the choir up front just after, at the end of service. So if you can do that, we would appreciate that. All right, so uh, I think that's all of our announcements. Uh, we are, uh, again, thankful for your giving, faithful giving to the Lord Jesus Christ and encourage you to continue that as we move forward. I, I know uh, cost of everything has, uh, has gone up. And uh, certainly uh, uh, we see the same effects as you do. Uh, we are uh, currently uh, changing our mowing services and need to find a new uh, uh, person or company to mow our, our property here. So if you know of somebody, um, either uh, let Al Gruber or uh, Lonnie Fogel know. And uh, anyway, uh, the company that was doing it or the person that was doing it is unable to continue. So anyway, and those costs are going up, I promise you, with the cost of gas, uh, gasoline. So anyway, uh, but uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, taking care of the property and making that continue to be a, a blessing to everyone. Uh, let's stand. We're going to sing our doxology as we ask God's blessings on the offering today. And uh, we are so glad uh, that we have this opportunity to give. If you haven't had that opportunity, the plate on the right-hand side of the door as you're going out, the one on the left is for the diaconate fund that we'll talk about at the end of service. And uh, so again, thank you for your faithfulness in that. As we stand, doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to give to you. And we pray today that our hearts are sincere and pure before you. 
and that we give gifts from love and praise and adoration to you. We pray this in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. We're going to ask Ruth Alla to come and she is going to lead us in Oh, How I Love Jesus. Thank you, Ruth Ella, and I hope that song puts joy in your heart. Oh, how I love Jesus. That, uh, that's, a, to me, a thrilling song and a thrilling message that we share and we give uh, to one another. And uh, I hope as we approach this very blessed time of the year and remember afresh and anew that Jesus Christ came for, uh, for you and for me to uh, pay for our sin debt, that we just rejoice in that, that it's a, it's a joyous time. I know it's cloudy outside. And I think clouds affect us, doesn't it? Just, it's, it's cloudy. And, and, but today, let's reflect the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. And, and uh, I, I think we can, we can push through the clouds and see the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I wanted to speak really a, almost a, a very basic message, but from a little different reflection, to remind us that there are those who truly do not understand what Jesus has done and who Jesus is, and uh, when Jesus even came. I think there are a lot of, of uh, uh, misunderstandings, truly, that are, that are, are in the world today. Jesus said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And reminds us that there are some qualifications, some things that we share about who Jesus Christ is. And I think it should be a great concern to us today to see and to hear so many people who falsely teach about God about who God is or what God is. Uh, someone said this, false teachers invite people to come to the master's table 
because of what's on it, not because they love the master. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. We sometimes are, are misguided in our means and our methods of, of approaching the Lord. Uh, even in Jesus' day, um, he saw that and witnessed that. And, and uh, several, we, we find, followed him for his, his deeds that were a miracles, where he fed the 5,000 where he healed the, the lame and the halt, where he, uh, where he healed the ones that were blind. And those special occasions brought the crowds in great number. But one day Jesus very specifically spoke to them and it said some of them followed him no more. I think there are so many offerings today of, of the version of who God is and of, of salvation that there's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of misunderstanding of how we meet Jesus and how he, he comes to us. And I think the tragedy of all this is that those who pervert the Word of God are, are raking souls into hell by the bucketfuls. And the most tragic words that connects to me in that matter of eternal existence is when the Lord talks here in this passage when he says, depart from me for I never knew you. That is a tragedy. And departing really, I guess we could say this way, speaks of distance, of going away, of being separated from, far from God. And what the Lord is speaking about in this, in this word of, of eternity's door, it will be the most tragic word that is ever spoken to a large number of people. When judgment day comes and mankind stands before God, as revealed in the book of Revelation chapter 20, as you look at that judgment and Mankind is now standing to give account of their life before God. There will be many who do not hear the Lord say, enter in. Instead, they will hear, depart from me. And that, my friend, is a tragedy. You see, it doesn't have to be. There is an opportunity. There is a choice. There is a way. But I would tell you today, there is only one day and one way. It was spoken here by Jesus, by the way, to religious people. And I find that significant, interesting, amazing. Here was people who were knowledgeable, who had books and learning and things that should have showed to them who God was and, who, and, and that Jesus was coming to them as the Son of God, but they missed it. They were so wrapped up in doing their religious acts, their, their, their duties, that they become tied up into those things rather than the Son of God. They thought themselves safe, but Jesus said they were lost. I, I read in the book of, or in Matthew Henry. Matthew Henry was a young man, but a tremendous Bible scholar. And he talks about verses 15 down through verse 20. And listen to what he says. We have here a caution against false prophets, or those who don't lead people to God, if you please. It says, to take heed that we be not deceived and imposed upon by them. Prophets are properly such as foretell things to come. There are some mentioned in the Old Testament who pretended to be that without warrant and the event disproves their pretensions or their thoughts as Zedekiah and it's recorded in 1 Kings 22 verse 11. Another Zedekiah is mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 21. But prophets did also teach the people their duty so that False prophets here are false teachers. Christ, being a prophet and a teacher, comes from God and designing to send abroad teachers under him gives warning to all to take heed of counterfeits who instead of healing souls with wholesome doctrine as they pretend would poison them. 
And there's a great danger that precludes these words, that, that overshadows what Jesus is telling to us today. It's the reminder that some people would do their best to mislead you. I think there are some who walk in that path of, of false prophecy, perhaps a little ignorantly, perhaps not knowing fully what they do. But the truth is, in the matter of God, we must know exactly what Jesus says and follow his words. There is but one way. So I want to present to you today two great questions. Number one, what is Christianity? What, when we talk about Christianity, what is it? Well, Christianity is that which, which really connects us to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's our presentation of our living before others as we try to show them who Jesus Christ is. That's the, the sum total of really what Christianity is. It's connecting to Jesus, knowing Him as your personal Savior and Lord, and then living your life in such a way that others see and know that you yourself are a, a Christian. I, I want you to know that here the Lord wants us to understand there are two things He wants us to do. If you look in verse 24 of, of Matthew chapter 7, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him upon a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Two things Jesus said that, that we have to do to, to truly know and understand what God wants us uh, in our lives to do. Number one, we have to hear the truth. We have to know who Jesus Christ is. We have to understand that he presents us with a way to reach heaven, to reach the portals of heaven and not there be cast out into hell, the lake of fire, but to enter in into the promised land of glory. We have to hear it. And that's simply hearing the truth of who Jesus Christ is. Accepting that truth is the doing. It says we have to follow him. There are a lot of people who listen. There are a lot of people who stand out in the outer, outer circle, I guess you could say. They're close to the truth. They want to listen to some of the things. They, they may even enjoy some of the preaching. But they miss the fact of doing it themselves, of making sure they know Jesus Christ as Savior. See, today, very simply put, Jesus must be heard. We need to listen to him. What does he say? And Jesus says in John 14 that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he says with, not without doubt, no man comes to God or the Father but by me. There's one way to heaven. I so often hear this and so tire of hearing it. Well, there's lots of different ways to get there. There's just a lot of paths that you can take to get to heaven. That isn't what Jesus said. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And he narrows down to a very definitive pathway for us to travel. He requires us to hear and know who he is. And then to accept him as our personal Savior and Lord. We need to listen. And then we need to do what Jesus asks of us. We need to... Do what he has commanded. And the Bible simply tells us, first of all, that's accepting him as our Lord and Savior. You see, knowledge of Jesus must be turned into action. And most of the world today will acknowledge they've heard of Jesus. Some will say, great prophet. Some will say, he was a good teacher. Some will say, in, in their own respect, that that he was someone that I, I would admire, but unless they accept him as their personal savior, they're not going to enter into heaven. Really, it comes down to a word called obedience. It's obeying what God has asked of us. So if I might say it this way, what is a Christian? Someone has said, a Christian is a keyhole through which others are able to see or perceive God. It's that, that little hole you might have in your door that you can look outside and see who has come to enter in. In fact, 
that is worded that way where Jesus says, I am the door. And he that, that, that enters in, enters into to fellowship with him. And, and trusting in Christ as a Savior is that connection from outside to the inside. I, I know education makes us a little wiser. The more you learn, um, the more you know. I, I, guess, I guess I can say it that way. But what if you go down a wrong pathway in listening to knowledge? I uh, have on my phone a little... Uh, that's a game, I guess. But anyway, it, it has four letters scrambled or five letters scrambled, and then you have to figure out how many words you can make out of that. And I like it. I like to challenge myself. Sometimes I think, I'm getting a little dull. I need to do something here to kind of tone, you know, tune. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you probably played that game. Well, I think we can educate ourselves, but it's more than education. You see, Christianity is that connection with God that, that makes you a better person. It makes you more Christ-like. And I guess we can ask ourselves this, do I expect, express Jesus to others? Does my life exemplify the life of Jesus? And when you think that, it, it really brings me to this second thought. All of Matthew and, and chapter 7 deals with the matter of salvation of being in or being out, of knowing God or not knowing God. And, and really it comes down to, do you see the importance of salvation? There are a lot of people who really truly think, and they've got it all wrong if they think this, but they think, I'm going to get to heaven by who I am, by my good works, by the deeds, or by the offering I give, or, or by me... Helping a little old lady across the street. Now that's a Boy Scout, isn't it? But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. And, and they miss the matter of salvation. And in verse 13 of, of this chapter here, it, it talks about seeing a wrong way. Listen to what it says in verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. A wide gate. It's an easy place to get through. A lot of people walk this way. A lot of people find that. But God says, Jesus says. This is a red letter edition here. It's Him speaking these words. He says it's a wrong way. And you see, if you try to get into heaven by other means, there's lots of other people trying to do that too. But the Bible says they'll not get there. In verse 15, I see the wrong preacher. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And it talks about their, their desire to destroy the flock, to destroy the community of believers. And that's talking about wrong preachers, those who preach for whatever reason but are not truly concerned about who Jesus is. In verse 17, I see a wrong fruit. It says, Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. I may have shared this with you before, I don't remember, but when I lived in Louisiana, we uh, uh, would go out and pick pecans uh, when it was pecan season, and that's every other year. It didn't happen every year. But, uh, but, but you had an opportunity to pick Pecans, a lot, of, a lot of places, at least in that time, would, would let you what was called picking on halves. You get to keep half of what you pick. It was a great deal, other than sore backs from reaching down, picking up all the pecans. But in, anyway, uh, there, there was a pecan that was all shriveled up, and they called them hog pecans. And the reason they nicknamed them hog pecans is because all they were good to do with those pecans was feed them to the hogs. They were no good. Bitter, uh, sour, I tried one once, just I thought, yep, they're right, don't want these. Tasted terrible. And, and there can be a wrong fruit. If it's not produced by the Lord in our lives, it shrivels up, it dries up, it has of no value. It's a wrong fruit. In verse 20, or in verse 26, it talks there about a wrong foundation. 
And that's where it's relating to us the story of building our house on a sand based land or on a rock where it doesn't give when the rains come. It says in verse 26, And everyone that heareth these sayings and doeth them not shall be like a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. That's a wrong foundation. And you know what? If you don't have a good foundation when you start, everything else just is going to collapse. That's what it's talking about. They understood that in Bible days because much of the land they built on was, was built with rocks. And they knew that that foundation had to be solid or the rocks would also fumble, uh, fall and tumble. And then in verse 23, it talks about a wrong future. Listen to what it says in verse 23. And then will I profess unto them. And that's talking about that judgment day. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity or work sin. And it's that reminder that there can be a wrong future if we've arrived at the wrong conclusion here. It leads to a wrong future. And you see, Bible salvation is based upon a very simple thing. It's built upon the acknowledgement that we personally sin. That we are sinners. That we're imperfect in our ways. That what we do, even when we do our best, isn't good enough. And it's an acceptance of Jesus Christ and, and what He came and what we will be talking about a lot in the next couple of weeks of providing for us a perfect salvation and sacrifice. You see, when people refuse that, Jesus says this, depart from me. That's the conclusion. And I think how many come to this conclusion in their minds, oh, there's going to be lots of leniency when it comes to this. God will just, he'll let some sneak in. He'll allow some to, to make another way. But leniency is not spoken of here. It's black and white. There are no shadows. You either put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, or very simply put, you have not trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior. A very clear dividing line. And you see, the, this, this day salvation is more vital than anything else. I think there are so many things that, that come into our life that, that affect us, that we are involved with. And sometimes those things overshadow the truth of who Jesus is and what He has done. Maybe someone today thinks money is vital to me. I, I need money to live. And we understand the connection of money and living. Maybe you think a car is vital. Or maybe you think a home is vital. And all of those things we, we might point at and say they are uh, something that, that really are nice to have. Or, or a home. But the truth is, we could do without all those things. But if you do not have salvation, you are lost. You are lost. And that's just the simple truth of what Jesus is here presenting. He's very precisely telling these religious men who have thought through their lives, I'm a pretty good guy, good guy. I get to wear these nice clothes because I'm a religious guy. And they've marked their lives with things that were outward. Jesus even talks in another passage about the taking of a cup and making a big deal about wiping that cup off and making it look really nice. But he said that which is inside is vile and putrid. And he reminds us that we must know Jesus Christ as our Savior personally. You see, there is... What Jesus has to say to us here in this passage of Scripture is that there is a possibility of being deceived, of being misled. In Revelation, there are five churches out of seven that needed repentance. Five churches that had the opportunity to hear the gospel, but in them was things that was wrong. You look at the church of Pergamos. A church that totally missed 
their understanding of who Jesus was. And I, I want you to hear this today. The devil is a successful counterfeiter. He knows how to take that which sounds kind of okay and twist it and confuse it and make it seem as, as a real thing. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, it reminds us that he is that deceiver and he has deceived and he will deceive. In fact, there will be that great falling away just before Jesus comes back in all His power and glory to establish a kingdom here on this earth when there will be an Antichrist who will set up a rule and reign and people will think He is just what they need. The devil's a great deceiver. And you might say, well, why should we believe there is a devil? Well, number one, the Bible clearly states that. Number two, his work is evident everywhere. And number three, great students of life and history and the Word of God have said he exists. You see, the words of Jesus emphasize the awful condition, if you please, and plight of these folks. Listen to what it says in verse 21, where Brother David read for us today. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And here, the Lord takes away from what we do, from attempts to try to do good things, or, or even to hide things. Here we see the Lord emphasizing what Jesus has done. And we have to make sure and understand the need of, of our salvation. That we know in our hearts that Jesus has saved us. In verse 24 it says, Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which builds his house upon a rock. That's the truth of knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And he's, he's telling us, he's reminding us, that we must not follow man's wisdom, but we must follow the Lord's truth. And I think we have to make sure today that we understand the need of, of, of that salvation in our life, of knowing Him as Savior. And we do that by, first of all, knowing the Word of God. If you open the, the Word of God, it's called dividing the Word. It's understanding who He is. Uh, and just for time's sake, I'm going to tell you to go home and read 1 John chapter 5. It will point you to who Jesus is. You have to know Him by the Spirit. Romans 8.16 talks about our spirit confessing uh, through the Spirit of God who He is. And then thirdly, by examination. That's your life. In 2 Timothy 1.10 it talks about examining yourself of making sure you had that personal experience in your heart, in your life. And I think we have to understand salvation is not based on human effort, or if you please, do-goodism. In verse 22, it says, many will say to me, Lord, and you can kind of see them holding the, the, the cuffs of their collar, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Lord, have we not cast out devils? Lord, in thy name, haven't we done some wonderful things, wonderful works, it says there. And that's the reminder, it's not what we do. It's what Jesus has done. And I assure you today, this morning, that, that the certainty of a place without God Revelation chapter 20, it, verses 12 through 15, and, and go home and read that if you would. That passage clearly defines what, what judgment will be before God. And then I see that great opportunity, the greatest ever offered to man in verse 24. Listen to what he says. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. He said, are you listening to what I'm saying? Is it, is it ringing true in your mind? He says, Whosoever hears them and does them, I will liken him to a wise man which has built his house upon a rock. He wants you to know him 
and accept Him as your Savior. What Jesus did at the cross of Calvary is all we need. He died there. The blood of Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, was shed there. The Lamb who John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. One black stormy night in a combat zone, southwest Pacific. Pilots had gone out off, a, off an aircraft cru uh, cruiser that, or an aircraft carrier. And they had went out to intercept the, war, uh, the, the, the fleet uh, of the enemy. And six of, of, of this gentleman's closest friends were, were out there. It was dark, it was hazy, it was raining, and they were 200 miles out at sea, away from no way of really knowing how to get back. And so they, they were talking on their radios, and they said, our, our compasses aren't showing right, and there was some confusion about what was north and due south and, and they weren't sure the compasses were right. And they were flying around running out of fuel and it was decided the searchlights that they had on board they would shine straight up. Just straight up. And, and the, the, this man who had one of his friends on one of these planes said, do you know where we are? And, and the other one he said, Pete you're flying too low you're going to hit the water. And he said, can you see any lights anywhere? And they started flying in a circle. He said, how much gas have you got left? And after a few minutes of silence, the tension greater and greater, it came over the radio in a clear, relieved and happy voice. I see the light. Our prayers have been answered. And they made it safely in. Sometimes we have to search and see that light through the the almost impenetrable darkness. And understand that God gives us what we need. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, for us to get home. I hope today you know Him as your Lord, as your Savior, first of all, and then as your Lord. And that you acknowledge Him in your life. And that Jesus Himself would save you from your sins. We are going to... Uh, Prepare now for a very special time here. This will be our communion. We're not going to be having a Monday Day Thursday service, and so this will be our, our supper today of celebrating who Jesus is and what He did. We're going to ask Brenda to come and sing for us, and as she does so, just, uh, just listen to her words. We'll ask our diaconate to make their way to the front, and we'll be preparing for a time of communion.
to find that God Yes, God himself walks Thank you, Brenda. Appreciate that. And so we come into our time of communion today. We are, seems like this time rolls around sometimes very quickly. It just seems like we were just here. But I'm glad we have this opportunity to again break bread and taste the cup of, of communion to remember what Jesus has done for us. In John chapter 3, starts with this scripture there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night and said to him rabbi we know that thou art a teacher from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him and here's what Jesus answered to him verily verily I say unto you and anytime Jesus says verily verily he's saying pay attention I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's meeting Jesus Christ, understanding we are lost in sin and that we need him as our Lord and Savior. That's accepting him as our personal Savior and Lord. And today I'm thankful that that opportunity is given to you. It's an invitation. It's always extended. It's always there. But when you hear it, you must heed it. You must listen to it. And I pray today that you listen to God's word and accept him as your Lord and Savior, more important than anything else. And as we partake today of communion, that is the only request that we ask of partaking or not partaking, is that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so today we are going to pass out the element of the bread and the bread represents the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you to hold the bread until all have received, and then we will have a prayer, and then we will partake together. Diaconate. The
as we hold the bread in our hand, we're thankful that Jesus came with the intent of offering his self, himself as our sacrifice. Hard to believe that that was on his mind the entire time he lived his life as he became aware of, of life and, and uh, taught the men in the temple. And they were amazed at what he knew. His understanding began to grow and, and as the Son of God was more revealed in him, his way towards the cross was inevitable. I'm thankful he died for you and for me. And as we hold the cup, or the bread rather, in our hand today, we acknowledge he had to offer himself as our sacrifice for our sin. I'm going to ask Brother David Lippert, would you uh, bless the bread to our body today? Please take and eat. Again, as we pass the cup, please hold until all have received. We rejoice because we can say 
the blood is sufficient. And today we rejoice because we can say it is finished. Let's take the cup and today we pray together that God blesses this as we remember he died for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Our love is poured out today in full measure as we rejoice what Jesus did for us is sufficient, efficient to pay for our sins. Lord, we thank you that we share this cup as brothers and sisters in Christ. And prayerfully those who are home today partake with us. And we just remember today that Lord, you are good to us. Your love is overwhelming and we're thankful that your blood covers it all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please take and drink. There are places there provided for you for your cups. Hazel shared with me as a diaconate report that we uh, did help uh, a family that was in need and we're thankful that we were able to do that. And so God is good. We're thankful for his blessings. Thankful for the goodness of we, we have together as a as a family and I believe the church is a family amen? amen and so today we're rejoicing together and we're just praying that God would bless this time we're going to remind you on the way out of course the diaconate fund is uh, on the left hand side the offering plate uh, goes into the church account on the right side and again thank you for being faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ thank you for being here today and we are going to stand and be dismissed in a word of prayer. And as we uh, go from this place, might you go away? Promise me this with a smile on your face. Amen. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for, for being here with us today. I'm going to ask Brother Ron, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer, sir?